So good afternoon, everybody. My name is Marielle van der Poel. I work for F. Hofmann La Roche. This is one of the biggest um, biotech companies in the world. I'm here today to talk to you about quantum computing. So I have a two-year-old at home, and my two-year-old boy thinks he can walk to walls and he can fly. And as you know, the brain of small children is not hindered yet by any rational boundaries. And I think this is a very nice comparison if you also think about quantum computing. As it actually also describes in reality, we cannot gasp currently with our rational mindset. And that's also what fascinates me personally so much about quantum computing. As it uh, will answer questions we cannot even imagine yet we will have. So it's a super exciting time to be in healthcare at the moment. So we see a convergence of medical knowledge, technology and data all coming together and radically change R&D and patient care. At Roche, we relentlessly follow the science to understand the underlying biology of diseases. So human biology is extremely complex and Drug design is very challenging, and just to give you an idea, by average, it takes us 12 years, 7,000 million hours of work, 6,000 experiments, and a screening of 5,000 to 10,000 medicinal agents, only to bring one medicine to market. So you maybe also understand why we are so interested from that perspective in quantum computing. If we could speed up that, pro that uh, process, then we could even bring medicines even faster to patients. So to do that, we have developed three scientific use cases. Each of them is very relevant for a pharma pipeline, for our business processes, and each of them has very clear classical methods to compare to, and also benchmarks. So we looked at machine learning, we looked at chemistry simulation, and at optimization. For each of these use cases, we partnered with quantum computing uh, algorithm experts. And together we looked, could we find solutions actually using the quantum circuits? Would it be better, would it be worse? What are actually the outcomes of this? And surprisingly enough, actually for machine learning, the outcomes were pretty good. We also did not fully expect that. The outcomes were actually the same or sometimes even better than on our classical solutions. For chemistry simulation and for optimization, we clearly see there is much more investment needed in doing algorithm development and trying to understand which quantum computing algorithms actually could work for us in that space. All of these three use cases have the limitation that, of course, the hardware is not fully available yet to see the full effect. But from what we see, this is basically the, the stand for uh, drug development. Overall, from this perspective, we see there is much more investment needed and fundamental research for algorithm development to work together. And we have to create kind of insights and follow the science and do new experiments and getting possibly to new discoveries from that perspective. We also do think that collaboration is certainly key in this perspective. So the quantum computing community as a whole, that is the quantum computing industry, the quantum computer users like us, but also academia, we all should work together and push on the boundaries of quantum computing and push forward innovation. Only in this way, also from our perspective, we can push and uh, bring medicines faster to patients. I hope with this relatively short talk, <laughs> I gave you um, more insight in basically in something we not really understand, but we try to understand, and also potential steps you can take 
to make basically quantum magic happen.